Yeah, so welcome back to this uh, school synergy session of the second part uh, of the session that Anusha had taken, in which we discuss the learning taxonomies and how they are connected with NEP. So last week we had decided that uh, we will discuss a few artifacts and lesson plans uh, that can be uh, designed based on the learning taxonomies that Anusha had shared. And uh, uh, we will discuss ideas for perhaps, uh, you know, effective uh, dimension, psychomotor dimension, or uh, ideas like collaboration, how one can design uh, certain activities or lesson plan uh, using those frameworks that Anusha had uh, shared. Apart from that, if there are any other ideas also, uh, participants are very much welcome to uh, share it uh, amongst all of us. Uh, so how we will go forward is I will uh, just uh, ask for introductions from all of you and you can uh, let me know if you have any ideas to share here. And uh, uh, after that, we will uh, go through uh, the, uh, the link that Anusha had shared on the group itself and maybe uh, collaboratively design a lesson uh, based on the topic that we feel is relevant. Okay. If this is okay, let's uh, move forward. So, uh, Arpana, you want to introduce yourself? Good afternoon, everyone. Yeah, am I audible? Okay. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Arpana Mervin. I'm from Bhopal City. I work as a PRT science teacher in St. Refil Coed School. Okay. And, yeah. Is that all? Or no, no, please go ahead. If you want to share anything else also. It's only yeah. a few of us here. Yeah. Uh, so last session was a wonderful session. I felt I could share my thoughts and I could relate with other people's uh, suggestions and their uh, points on certain things that ma'am was discussing in the last session. And uh, uh, one thing that I felt was uh, when while we were discussing is that collaborative methods of teaching and learning are very, very effective. And I've applied that in my classrooms and I wish to learn more about it. So, yeah. Arpana, would you be sharing any examples that you have done in the classroom, the collaborative mode of teaching learning process? Uh, uh, Ma'am, uh, example, I'm not sure, but uh, I would like to share something. Is that, Ma'am, I, I strongly believe that uh, true, powerful and meaningful learning occurs when uh, what children are interested in learning matches with uh, the capacity of a teacher. And so I feel that before we, and I also believe that learning should not just prepare children for future, but also it should add some meaning and value to their present life. So whenever I start with a topic, let's, for example, I'm teaching class five students about moon, the moon. So what is the relevance of teaching this chapter to them at this age when they mm -hmm. are living on planet Earth, learning about moon? So I feel the introductory activities that we do before we start with the explanation or before we start, start with the other, uh, you know, uh, before we start with the actual topic, the introductory activities that we do in the class, I feel they play a major role in, you know, capturing the interest of the learners, the students. So mm -hmm. I design my introductory activities like that, that uh, the conclusion of those activities answer this question that why they need to learn or why they need to read about this topic okay. the more and so i feel that uh, these introduction activities should be very strong and should you know be able to persuade the learner to you know read or learn or even come to self learning you know? okay yeah. yeah thank you so much arpana um who would uh, share the next? Who wants to share? Nilima, Kranti, Aruna. Yes, good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, Nilima. Uh, I am Nilima Mohanti from Odisha, Bhubneswar. I, I am a primary teacher, teacher in science uh, for mm -hmm. DB Public School, Chandrasekarpur. And uh, actually, madam, last class i have uh, i am not able to attend the last class okay but still i can say that a collaborative teaching 
what they, uh, you are going to discuss that is the i think it is the cooperation of two or more than two teachers to the same students uh, for a same topic and uh, we are uh, actually i am also using uh, sometimes in our school it is also we are doing with the help of suppose i am teaching one topic i can take the help of uh, my uh, art teacher just to integrate the art integration suppose i am teaching that uh, the yeah. concept of uh, uh, any system of our body suppose take an example of breathing system so i can take the help of my art teacher and how to make the model uh, then like this i am linking to 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 uh, other teachers any like this any many things we are doing with the help of uh, english teacher or uh, sst teacher one topic with the help of two two more teachers yeah, yeah. i think so we got madam last class yes yeah so nilima thanks for sharing that so yes collaborative uh, teaching can be done uh, with other teachers uh, in which you know you can integrate art and work with other uh, uh, work with other teachers uh, who are working in art maybe uh, or in other subjects and you can co teach that you know that can be also collaborative teaching learning process the other way of doing uh, collaborative teaching learning is uh, making the students into groups and asking them to collaborate and uh, to learn together and to uh, for that you know you cannot give every activity that you have designed for individual students to this group itself you have to think you know what will they do in the group what will they discuss and uh, you know what will they share who how will they share what are the points at which they will be discussing how the discussion would be facilitated so that can also be a kind of collaborative learning okay so nilima i hope this is clearer to yes, you yes now? yes 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 ma ah, yes. so it can be both ways different okay yeah uh, kranti ma'am would you like to share good afternoon ma'am good afternoon thank you madam thank you for sharing uh, new strategies in our teaching learning pro process for a progressive uh, professional development madam uh, collaborative teaching and collaborative learning both are interested areas ma'am because if we go through collaboration uh, we can get um, fruitful outcomes madam uh, especially for children when they uh, participate in project works uh, designed for group Uh, they share their ideas freely because they feel that is a liberal platform for for them. Even the art integrated uh, teaching learning process also oh, these days fruitful because madam, even the last child uh, we uh, we can't say the last grade child even the last child and uh, who is uh, the last bencher can express his or her views through art integration especially through a drawing skill which is the, uh, considered as children's language uh, even a boy or girl express their uh, perception whatever the concept uh, re related um, they can draw a picture they can express through their uh, some rhythmic uh, songs or uh, dance and yeah. that is so the, all these um, expressions yes these yeah, expressions yeah, are man. very very important uh yeah so uh, we can think of how these expressions can be included in collaborative learning activities also right right yes, krati ma'am ma thank you ma'am yeah okay yeah aruna would you like to share yeah can you yeah. hear me hello yeah oh uh... i am not very sure how much i'll be able to contribute today but uh, uh, there are a few points that i would like to share my thoughts about okay uh, i read through the nep document and uh, it lays a lot of emphasis on foundational literacy hmm. and uh, numeracy um, for which i feel uh, we can make uh, more robust use of the taxonomies like blooms uh, we usually concentrate on the cognitive domains uh but if we are con uh, if we would like to have better outcomes for foundational literacy and uh, numeracy i feel uh, if we include uh, if we take the uh, chance to include more of the psychomotor and the affective domains uh, we will be able to uh, achieve it better 
so um uh, one uh, experience that i would like to share is uh, uh, where i worked uh, uh, you know was a rural place where a lot of the children were first generation english medium learners uh, where they couldn't get uh, um, uh, help from home for academic skills uh, so uh, Uh, as a speech therapist i used to help out in the kindergarten classes with uh, english head start uh, uh, activities so that they can make the transition from uh, to include learning a new language english and uh, learning academic skills in the new language that they have learned so uh, this would be apart from the regular kindergarten activities and uh, uh, curriculum that was covered and i felt uh, understanding the need of that particular uh, area that particular region and the children uh, from what background they come and uh, addressing those needs um, helps us to achieve better learning outcomes i think definitely you are uh, correct in that and we do need to understand the context and the knowledge of the students and the backgrounds from their, where they are coming so this is uh, an important idea and perhaps we can integrate that also in our uh, planning activity and uh, design something uh, be considering this as an important in, in an integral part of the design itself right yeah so uh, thank you all uh, i think Uh, we have a group here so we can continue uh, designing a plan now uh, so uh, now i said uh, i want you all to think you know one topic that you can uh, uh, perhaps uh, you know on which you want to work on together today so since we have lot of uh, we have people who have worked as primary teachers mostly maybe we can think of a primary level topic and uh, something that you feel is important for the student and uh, we can use that framework shared by anusha to design something for the topic itself any uh, any primary level topic that you feel we can take up i want all of you to think for a minute and uh, write it on the chat or speak up that topic here nilima aparna uh, arpana kranti any topic that you have been teaching in the class aruna adaptations okay anything else nilima aap bataiye nilima you want to speak yes yes ha huh. any ideas okay kranti you want to say any uh, topic english madam how can we enhance english language because multilingual instructions okay yeah. aruna said multilingual and our kranti says english language so i think both of the things can be taken together english and other language because at primary level see uh, at primary level when we are engaging with kids we do need to consider their home language as an important resource you know and uh, so when we are designing something we need to consider that students will be using their home language and then we can also uh, share ideas uh, share uh, words from english language so that they are able to connect their home language with the hindi or english whatever the medium of instruction is and they can connect these two so these connections are formed in the school right so uh, multilingualism yes we can do in the classroom uh, there is been a suggestion of adaptation in animals yeah so let us then uh, Uh, do what we'll do is we'll discuss adaptation of animals at primary level 
and uh, we are we also need to make uh, make an activity in such a way that we are able to use uh, multiple languages students from home language can also come here and uh, we also need to take care of other aspects that were focused in the uh, framework itself let me share that framework again uh, let me share the screen So there were several frameworks in that reading, backward planning and uh, backward design. What I want to focus on, oh, this is action research, no, not this one. I did it, wait. That's what happens when you just uh, give me one moment. Let me find that reading again. One second. Yeah, found it. Uh, Dr. Ajit, if you want to share anything about, you know, last week's uh, talk that we had done, and if you have any ideas, you can share. Teachers have already shared, and finally, we are deciding uh, that we will uh, move forward to designing an activity on adaptation in animals, and uh, which involves multiple languages also. So, uh, backward design, uh, if we try to do backward design here, what we need to do is to identify the desired results first. So you can take out your copies and uh, pens and you can uh, write down at least two objectives or two results that you want to see. At the end of this activity, what is it that you want students to be able to show, express? Uh, this would be for primary school. Oh, yes, it? yes, it is for primary school. Right. So the, therefore, the adaptations in animals have to be something which is accessible to a primary level student. So maybe we can do, um, we have to even think of a specific animal that we can use. Maybe we can use fish there. Uh, maybe fifth standard student, fourth or fifth standard students can uh, understand that, uh, that the fish, they have, you know, a uh, different kind of uh, organ for uh, respiration. They have gills and, uh, uh, you know, uh, we can, uh, maybe adaptation in animals would be a difficult topic here. Maybe just about uh, characteristics of animals we can take. What about that? Would everyone be okay about it? I guess this would be a good, uh, uh time to understand the meaning of adaptation uh -huh. uh, okay you know maybe not in terms of uh, how each animal has adapted uh, by changing the organ that it breathes with or things like that but uh, yeah. maybe things like uh, migration which uh -huh. is an adaptation uh, or uh -huh. uh, nowadays we don't see so many sparrows in cities uh, mm -hmm. is that an adaptation yeah um, yeah yeah so those are uh, i mean good more cases generic. when you yes i think the, these are good examples so what you have also started with is a uh, something which is already seen in your uh, environment you know, Definitely. and uh, using that as a starting point. So uh, still what is uh, happening is that we are using the starting point based on the content that we want to. Uh, no, no. Uh, so, uh, yeah. so the result that I want is for the primary level child to understand the meaning of adaptation. Okay. So you are using one, first examples. Using examples of animals. So first objective itself we have here is uh, understanding the uh, meaning of adaptation. Let me write this somewhere. Wait. 
what do the others feel is that a, a reasonable learning outcome yeah please feel free to respond yeah Ma'am, I agree ma with the yeah. I agree with the uh, Aruna ma'am, as she said that students very important that they understand that change is the only constant thing, and if an animal is not able to change or you know acquire those features which will help the animal to survive in the change changing environment, like she spoke about sparrow, why why don't we see more of sparrows in the city or crow? nowadays even crows are disappearing from city so uh, uh, you know the students should uh, be able to understand that change is very important and so adaptation in terms of change in their body or acquiring skills and you know that will help them to survive better in their environment or changing environment because environment i feel is changing around the globe the climate is also changing so uh, earlier we were thinking about drought resistant crops now we are trying to develop rain resistant yes Very so true. what and features the make them adapt be. next one is what features how the features make them adapt okay so i'm trying to just note down the examples also yeah uh, sparrows disappearing migration then you also said uh, uh something that we can also observe would be the material that birds use to build their nests uh, we usually think they use dry grass and uh, naturally available things but in cities crows can use hangers and so it would you know we could think of it as an adaptation for primary school level hmm. okay i mean it may not be very science science but uh, no ma'am encourage observation yes ma'am that's very true and i think um, it's really nice that we can you know, if we could, can include such things in our teaching you know uh, teach children to observe such things so that they understand that not just us but animals are also evolving they are also changing and they adapt according to whatever resources and materials given to them they also change and adapt mm -hmm. you know recently uh, i live in bangalore and uh, there was an article in the newspaper about fish dying in a um, um, popular lake around here because of uh, pollutants being pumped into that lake so uh, maybe we could think of uh what adaptations could help the fish to survive or you know would that lead to adaptations or not yes right maybe in future fish a fish would be able to like develop some kind of system within the body where it would be able to screen out all the plastic and all kinds of different pollutants that we are throwing in water bodies Yeah. Yes. So I think it is unlikely uh, because I do have a biology background. So I think it is a uh, very, very, you know, very far future if something like this happens. Right now, do you know what is happening? As uh, there are uh, recently, there was an article which said that you know within the human body, several microplastics have been detected. So the plastic is not just in the lake now. the plastic is in already inside our body and you know if the human kind does not uh, come up with a way to remove this plastic from our body we are going to have lot of uh, okay we are going to have lot of issues uh, going ahead our generation is going to suffer and uh, who knows how this plastic will react with our body within our cell it may go and sit there in the cell may cause cancer who knows what so we really need to uh, you know uh, think of plastic not just as out there now but is it is also inside us mm. and i don't think we can adapt to it we but need to do something yeah 
this yeah. is the conclusion that i want children to come to that if we are not able yeah. to adapt to that well, well i mean some kind then of we are not able to survive yeah, okay? then, it then will cause happens. problems yes yes so adaptation then becomes a very important thing and so we we need to learn about it so maybe hmm. that is something the children can take home that adaptation doesn't happen overnight it is a hmm. slow and long process yeah yes for primary school i think um... yeah, i think it is important yeah microplastics in uh, humans i think there was one example i just missed somebody was talking about it uh, i'm sorry i don't remember there if if i have missed anything here please let me know huh in terms of uh noting down the objectives or the example see what i'm seeing here is uh, you know we are the kind of examples that we are coming up uh, uh, with are a kind of you know uh, an example of adaptation and uh, different ways in which it happens uh different ways it, in which it gets visible uh and also non examples we are also trying to give non examples so both example as well as non example helps the students to develop an understanding but however till now we have focused only on the cognitive aspect of the this concept itself uh, so we are only focusing on the understanding itself so we in order to move beyond the cognitive aspects towards the affective and the psychomotor domain can you think of certain uh, examples or activities which we can give to students let us now try to think of any objective which is related to uh, effective aspect or a psychomotor aspect uh ma'am uh, one activity which comes to my mind is that like uh, giving uh, one particular animal like for example camel camel is a mm -hmm. common matlab i i think class 5 students would easily be able to place the correct uh, yeah. this animal to its correct habitat so for example give that animal a different habitat and then ask students what will be the uh, consequences of placing this animal in a different habitat and uh, whether the animal would be able to survive or not or what kind of effects will uh, we ob be able to observe on this particular animal if the habitat changes drastically or yeah okay. so maybe so what is your objective so what would you say your objective would be in a cognitive domain or effective domain or psychomotor i hope you understand the, these three things cognitive domain is something which you are you know something which you think about reason about uh, you know you may be doing some sort of an application you may be observing all these uh, corresponds to the cognitive domain the effective domain corresponds to what we feel about things you know how we feel about things so we have heard about you know that girl uh, uh, that activist activist girl who feels very uh, strongly about you know the climate change uh that is happening oh what's her name greta 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 uh, greta greta than yeah yeah so uh, this greta is uh, she feels a lot about climate change and that's why she is into activism so there is also you know this affective aspect how children feel about the environment can we think some objective about it psychomotor is how you you know how you use your body how you uh, how you interact with environment around you and how you interact with animals around you uh, to help you understand about adaptation through interaction maybe it could be movement it could be uh, doing some sort of activity it could be you know different ways of interaction itself so let us try to think of those objectives and those examples also can we try so maybe we could have projects like these are the materials available to you you have to make a nest 
so would you use something pliable and malleable or yeah would you use a metal or, or, uh, or you know alternatively so, alternatively it could be like you know uh, imagine that you know uh, a bird is uh, living in a city and uh, so what are the possible uh, materials that the bird can use for making a nest and have you observed such kind have you observed nests in your surrounding and what kind of materials are used by the birds to make these nests itself you know all these three th things together can be there and the process of making a nest so the process of making a nest will definitely involve something psychomotor mm -hmm. and uh, you know it will also involve cognitive aspects of observation and also of noticing what materials are there and uh, using those material to make the nest itself so yes this can be a very nice act, uh, psychomotor uh, based activity. I'll just put it separately. Um, while I'm putting it there, maybe you can try to think of other effective examples also. Uh, I just need to take a break for two minutes. I'll be back. Uh, meanwhile, please, uh, can you just continue? Any ideas for affective domain? Uh, how to make it fun and emotional? <laughs> I have, I have, I don't know if uh, uh, anybody in the group has ever observed, but I have observed that how cows in the city are behaving now. That ah. uh, uh, they they have this habit of going to everybody's you know main door and standing there for a few minutes you know they expect that somebody from inside would come and feed them so now they are not like um, that habit of grazing and going out and finding your food and you know then feeding i think that is disappearing in city cows cows which i mean uh, owned by people not just the ones which are left on the road too you know so i i have seen that these cows you know they are in habit of like you know going and standing for a few minutes in front of people's houses and waiting there waiting in you know expectation that somebody would come and feed them so i don't know if they are adapting uh, they are learning that food is easily available this way so why not <laughs> instead of going and because anyways uh, you know the kind of food that they eat it's disappearing from cities or is out of reach of these animals so yeah so uh, you know there are uh, not just cows there are many other uh, you know uh, even crows they uh, do this kind of behavior in bombay uh, there used to be one crow whenever i used to open my kitchen window he would come and sit on the window itself and in fact would even ka in such a way, it seems as if he is asking for uh, the roti, you know, and I would give the roti and he will take it and uh, go away. And I am sure he must be doing it 
uh, in several houses. So this is a kind of a behavior. So we are, what we need to think here is, you know, this is a kind of a learning. So how is, is learning same? Is learning same or different from adaptation? Uh, what is what is really adaptation? Would learning be adaptation? We also uh, learn so many things every day. Would we say that we are adapting? I guess, ma'am, I think we learning a set of uh, behavior or skill yeah. helps us to adapt. And so it learning... definitely helps us to survive. But, you know, if you see the classical examples of adaptation, these are the kind of changes that have happened uh, in an organism that are passed on to generations and have also helped them to survive, you know. So we need to, uh, this, uh, in terms of the behavioral changes, it is right now, it, it is happens within the lifespan of one cow, right? It is not something which uh, perhaps is uh, inherited by the, uh, you know, by uh, the uh, young ones of the cows going forward. On the other hand, you know, uh, if you see dogs as a species, Dogs as a species have evolved with humans. So they, you know, they, they have kind of uh, uh, qualities which are, uh, and personalities which are uh, inheritable by their young ones. And they definitely help them to survive because of the kind of interaction uh, that they do with uh, humans itself, right? So, uh, you know, uh, there, there, a new aspect, a new dimension of understanding adaptation is opening up now. So what we are discussing now is, you know, adaptation and the role of humans. Yeah. So yaha animal or uh, man ka jo interaction hai, us, I mean, the, the interaction that is done by man and animal, how is adaptation happening there? How, how is it how is the man supporting or inhibiting the adaptation? So earlier we used to think of adaptation as something as a, uh, uh, a force of nature, you know, and we do not think that man has any role to play there. But I mean, the kind of uh, destruction that we are doing on earth, definitely we are playing a big role in uh, this, uh, uh, in uh, various species adaptation, I would say not just one. Okay, so do we, do, do you see any effective aspects in uh, what we have discussed till now? Kahi pe bhi aapko feeling, emotion wali baat aapko dikh rahi hai. Do you see anything which is related to how students feel about something? Maybe if we make them write uh, uh, essays on topics like how the fish who is living in a polluted lake is feeling, uh, you, you know, um, that would include affective. Mm. Okay, so how would a fish feel in a polluted lake? Or maybe writing a story about that. Yeah, so that will perhaps help, uh, help them. Uh, let me write that first. Not a great example, but uh, I mean, no, I think it is a good example. We can build on it, definitely. Uh, writing, sorry, writing a story of a fish. Sorry. Oops. Okay, any other examples? Anybody else wants to try? Where, you know, students' emotions are involved, students' feelings are also involved. How you feel about environment, how you feel about uh, adaptation. 
so this i i remember there was this example abhi yeah behavior of cow in urban areas so we were discussing whether this is adaptation or not and we see also see that you know many cows are eating uh, plastics and then it gets uh, stuck in their uh, stomach and they many of the cows they die because of that and uh, you know so is it possible for them to develop any adaptation to it and if it is not possible then you know uh, what is it that we can do Yeah. madam shall i yeah please go ahead madam uh, in my school ground what used to happen children used to buy so many snacks junk food from outside uh, that was a great problem for us uh, it is related to adopting only madam please listen yes uh, uh -huh. i suggested my children why are you buying these things from uh, shops nearby our school madam they are tasty attractive covers uh, uh, in the packets okay uh, only very tasty spicy snacks are them okay uh, i got an idea madam i brought some uh, four to five kgs of peanuts uh, brown nuts and i gave that to mdm team mid day meals team cooks are there in our school government is providing mdm you, you all know that uh, i uh, requested them please add some uh, uh, red chili powder salt and uh, with some oil curry leaves okay it was become a habit weekly once i practice this and provided a uh, little amount of uh, brown nuts to children they have habituated to this spicy taste i suggested after 5 6 weeks my dear children why don't you ask your mother uh, to prepare like this because your uh, stomach is filling with waste and you are filling our playground also with waste and animals like puppies kittens some dogs also coming inside they are also touching and trying to eat these um, from these cows some little amount of food which is left over there uh, is this good uh, for us um, uh, we are making harmful for them for their health also like that i created some aware and not only that madam at the time of ganesh festival also uh, i motivated my children please prepare um, with clay whatever you available because i work in rural rural area madam and they started to prepare uh, images of ganesh with uh, clay and uh, started to color them with water colors they have water colors for their art and craft work they have they started to decorate with those colors and they they um, performed they worshiped th that image only and they um, celebrated that festival made by the village um, by them itself and that was also an adaptation because when we use artificial colors preservatives uh, and uh, the plaster of paris made images that will harm the uh, uh, animal creatures animals which live in uh, water my dear children please uh, do practice like this and even you teach this thing whatever you learnt to your younger ones i suggested that also have been practicing at our school for last 4 to 5 years madam yeah thank so, you yeah thank you so much kranti ma'am so no, it is madam good food day because uh, madam what uh, one important thing i i forgotten madam uh, the children uh, now th these are a summer vacation children are sharing i am having um, this uh, boiled egg this is my favorite fruit uh, mango this is good food for me these are peanuts these are fried bengal gram like this we when we started good food day celebrating good food day at our school that that becomes a habit and they even uh, sending video clips and pics on whatever they have uh, natural food homemade food uh, nutritious food like fruits and nuts like that madam um, it was it was transformation suppose i can say that madam i even uh, uh, have written a story success story and sent it to crt telangana madam that is going to be published uh, for this academic year ms thank you for giving me this yeah. opportunity yeah. madam yeah thank you thank you so much kranti ma'am and uh, i really love the enthusiasm that you have for trying out new things in your school please do continue to do that and I'm thanks to telangana giving... madam telangana yes, city pet yes. yes yes so uh, clicks is working there i know i have been to telangana yeah 
yeah thank so you. this is uh, nice uh, it's a good example however ma'am i just uh, wanted to point out something uh, which is very important here you know that uh, there are certain examples of adaptation that we have in our daily life in how we work in our daily life and there is a certain specific meaning of adaptation that we use in science what is happening here uh, in the examples that we are giving the meaning of adaptation in daily life and the meaning in science it is getting mixed okay and uh, so and this is also likely to happen in our classrooms also so ma'am what example the, that example you gave of adaptation it is an example of adaptation in daily life it is not an example of adaptation that we use in science in science when we use adaptation it is about certain features or certain characteristics of animal that uh, you know uh, an animal may have developed in response to a stressful situation in an environment and this this feature is inheritable it can be passed on to the next generation so that is the scientific adaptation in animals the adaptation that you are talking about is adaptation in daily life of how we in our daily life we uh, you know change the way we are uh, working we change our practices to you know uh, make those practice more efficient or more better to adapt them if something is not available we make uh, we use other kind of things uh, innovations uh, or other kind of things that are available so this is something that you need to understand it is a very good example but it is a an example of adaptation in daily life not a scientific adaptation that we were discussing so and i think that it is important to discuss these examples also in the classroom and to be able to say that you know this is also adaptation but it is something which is used in uh, uh, english language to talk about the way we work in our daily life itself and but there in when we are talking about science there is a certain specific meaning here okay and another thing that i wanted to point out here is uh, what in kranti ma'am's uh, example is you know connecting with students daily life you ganesh festival and everything here you know you can see the potential of bringing in students home language very much right in these example when they are describing the kind of uh, food that they like you know there might be certain kind of uh, in uh, for example in hyderabad telangana this uh, palli uh, i think you call that uh, there is this uh, yes, palli ground nut uh, which is uh, boiled and spiced and everything and it is a very uh, or a uh, bengal gram which is boiled so this is a very nice snack that they have uh, you know and which is the which is easily available uh, so you know there, there are certain practices of uh, in the culture itself that you start using it um, uh, to uh, you know get to adapt more uh, i would say better uh, food practices food eating practices here so these kind of things can also come in the classroom it's a good example thank you going back um, what i would yeah, uh, I like to add add here uh, is um, uh, i i i uh, was listening to a botanist talk about uh, the kurunji flower and uh, uh, we were talking about uh, he was talking about how uh, when a cert, when there is a change in the environment and a certain tipping point number of uh, organisms uh, produce that uh, adaptation then it becomes genetic in nature and then it is uh, it goes and it uh, goes on to the next generation and so on so uh, the adaptation in daily life if it is uh, spread across a large enough population then it yeah. becomes the adaptation that we are talking about in science so maybe yeah. we could uh, uh, talk to our primary school children about numbers and statistics behind adaptation Uh, yes also. we can bring out uh, statistical thinking that we were discussing in bidu's session we can use that perhaps to you know connect these two ideas together it's a good idea but it still needs to be 20000 animals develop 20000 yeah. animals uh, present that change then it becomes genetic in nature and it it is uh, um, it's not only that 20000 but somewhere the change has to be encoded in the genes 
you know it it, it should not be just a, a behavioral change itself a behavioral change may not be encoded in our genes and uh, right now this phenomena itself is not very well understood as to how you know things get encoded in genes it's uh, we know only about our physiology uh, the way our body reacts uh, uh, and the uh, how genes are expressed uh, physiologically in our body but we do not yet know uh, in terms of emotion in terms of you know behavior what we do how does that get encoded in our genes itself and how does that get uh, uh, you know transferred to uh, further progenies itself you know they they do say that you know uh, it is not necessary that you know if the parent is uh, an extrovert that the child will also be an extrovert it it may vary so we do not really know how what that phenomena is okay so there are i think that in, is discussed in epigenetics yes know. yes yeah so but it goes beyond the primary level uh, science itself now it uh, now we are going almost to the science which can be done at high school level or a uh, uh, graduate level science so we need to get back to the level uh, of primary level uh, and discuss that so right now we were what we were discussing is any effective uh, you know uh, activity i was thinking that you know uh, in terms of uh, the uh, adaptations in animals perhaps we can also think of an activity uh, where uh, the students do some sort of a role play you know and uh, the role play of uh, you know uh, how the uh, maybe uh, uh, different adaptations perhaps have occurred in camel itself uh, you know how it could have occurred across different uh, uh, different years different ages how it could have happened how the environment contributed to it how uh, you know uh, the different features contributed to it and uh, so that doing that role play make you empathize you know make you uh, put yourself in the shoes of that animal itself and how you are reacting to that particular environment so it is sort of building on your idea of uh, aruna your idea of story of fish itself except that here instead of writing we are asking them to do a role play so then there would be a, some sort of a psychomotor activity also and it would be an affective activity also uh, we can also ask them to you know think about the global climate change and uh, in terms of uh, you know whether uh, do you think how many uh, uh, species are going to uh, go extinct if the climate changes substantially and whether the adaptation can save those animals or not it is just a hypothetical uh, discussion uh, perhaps maybe not at the primary level but at a high school level we can have that kind of discussion with them but uh, at the primary level yes it's it's you you can help them to uh, think about these you know being in these different animal shoes by uh, storytelling by uh, by role playing and uh, several other activities yeah excuse me any suggestions yeah uh, ma'am uh, can we ask them to watch a cartoon movie like ice age or uh, yeah there are certain cartoon movies where they show that uh, you know how adaptations have helped animals survive or uh cause extinction if the animal was not able to adapt to extreme changes in weather and then maybe have a movie review and then discuss like mm. what happened what part of the movie they enjoyed and why they did so and mm -hmm. see how it affects them if they are sad uh that the um sad that the animal had to go through so much because of the weather changes and human activities because there are many cartoon movies where they show how human activities are affecting this kind of changes and causing this kind of changes in animal habitats mm -hmm. so can we have that yes it's a very good example actually i really like it would i mean uh, if you ever use it please do share your experience of that how human activities can uh, have an impact impact on animal life how do we about can i share something ma'am yeah please go ahead 
I was recently a few days back I was watching a movie with my son actually I don't remember the name of that cartoon movie in that cartoon movie there was a group of animals which uh, were not aware that their uh, uh, area their habitat had reduced to only a very small piece of land and around them the humans had built their own colonies nice posh colonies so one animal who was uh, for many years that animal was living in these uh, uh, posh human colonies how he had over the period of time learned to uh, feed on this uh, packet processed uh, food products now came mm. to this uh, portion of the area where these animals uh, unaware living in that particular area not aware of the fact that they are now surrounded by human colonies comes mm. in and teaches these the, this group small group of animals to now mm-hmm. adapt and change their feeding habits according to what is available around them because their mm-hmm. habitat had reduced and so the food was not available so like i when i was watching that movie i was just thinking about you know mm-hmm. how these animals are learning to adapt one animal is teaching the other animal so in cartoon movies they show a lot of these kind of things of which we can use in our classrooms that's why i suggested watching the cartoon movie yeah 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 although it is unlikely to happen but uh, yeah it's a good example of you know how uh, the food, food eating habits have changed even for animals uh, that are living in urban area and uh, very different from uh, uh, you know natural places and uh, one can perhaps um, you know uh, first discuss that part itself with you know okay, how the if the uh, area get reduced what kind of uh, impact it has on animals uh, and uh, you know you can bring up examples of uh, man and animal conflict especially when the area gets reduced there are a lot of examples in, of that in the newspapers and uh, since it is unlike this case what is there in the cartoon is unlikely to happen then what could be the uh, perhaps alternative uh, uh, to uh, this situation itself that is happening in our uh, uh, world right now so i think uh, that is also a good food for thought for uh, students about uh, the concept of adaptations yeah thanks a lot for uh, contributing that i think we have come up with the whole yeah so see we have almost filled the whole page yeah more than a page so i'm very happy today and it has been a very a uh, productive session where we have come up with so many so many ideas for uh, teaching just one topic and we have not only thought about it cognitively about the concept itself we have thought about it in terms of languages a language also we have thought about uh, about it in terms of effective dimension as well as the psychomotor dimensions we have even thought about the various kinds of examples um and non examples we have also thought about examples which are specifically related to our daily life also and also uh, due to the impact of the human activity on animal condition so i think this is very very comprehensive this one hour has been very productive and i must uh, thank all of you for participating so actively in this yeah so if anyone wants to give the comment you know you can uh, about this experience of last one hour uh, you know what you felt was it useful for you or uh, you know what else can be done in this kind of session uh, i would really uh, love that ma'am uh, personally i really enjoyed the session i learned a lot because i have been teaching this particular topic for so many years now teaching science in class 4 and 5 and uh, i have got some really great ideas which i will definitely include this in this year's um, teaching when i am teaching this particular topic and uh, if when i do that i will definitely share my experience thank you so much ma'am thanks a lot would anyone else like to share anything thank you madam thanks a lot for for giving opportunity to share our classroom 
experiences pedagogical small experiments here okay. it is an encouragement and great learning for us ma'am thank you i also feel as much encouraged and uh, i i feel even i have learnt a lot from all the examples that you all have given because our all our collective ultimate destination is classroom itself is no ma'am yes whatever the whatever the experiment we have done at our ground level i mean classroom uh, that's what the great thing yes. i always feel yes yes definitely i totally agree with you thank you ma'am thank you ma'am okay anyone else thank you ma'am it is a wonderful session and here actually i have learned one thing in uh, while teaching a concept or while teaching one topic how to relate with the uh, three domain that is yes. psychomotor affect affective domain and the cognitive domain so this is the new things so all the three things how, how it would it should it would be in, in inculcated in this chapter while teaching that i have learned and i have enjoyed lot i have learned many things from my Uh, other uh, teachers those who are here in this session thank you very much thank you so much yeah okay yeah so if uh, there is no one else who wants to share maybe we can end the session we will uh, meet again uh, probably next week but i'm not sure about next week i will uh, post on the school synergy teachers forum group okay yeah bye then all the best Bye.